Well, here we are. End of the line. End of the road. The last episode. What is going on, YouTube? New to Pro here to bring you the final episode in our Killer Frequency Let's Play. It has been an absolute roller coaster. There have been ups, downs, people live, a couple of people died. Not that serious. It's okay. We did save some, and that's all that matters. I am so curious to see where this story goes now, how it ends. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this going. <sighs> Here we go. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through too. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Maybe, maybe I want the music. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie's oh. here too. Oh, cool. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, we're good, man, thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Oh? Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have Ricky? to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. What? Tell me about him. What was George like? I didn't know him for long, man. Sad to say. We had our first team party on the night he drowned. Ooh. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Ricky, listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before, or see her after that. I never even got her name, man. I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. <sighs> I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. No. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time, and then right, the like next thing you. I knew, Everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And, and I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about wow. George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but... Uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die Dang. that night, it should have been me. And you hey, what? Maybe if you hadn't run, oh my God. It wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. It took a long time to learn, but. Dang, bro. Yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. Thanks, Hans. You got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. What a bees. Man. I'll let you to it. Ah! Night, Ricky. All right, folks. Looks I'm like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, killing her right now. In. If she was George's bean. girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Yeah. Huh. Oh, we Peggy have another Halloween. call coming in. But hang on. 
What's up, Peggy? Peggy. Peggy. Where's that, bro? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks. It's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Actually, let's change the tune. Um... Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Okay. Hello? Forrest, I'm <gasps> glad I got back through to you. Yo! Uh, it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator. Yeah, get back and come do your job. I'm sick of this shit. It's so good to hear from you. I do you have okay? a sh sparkling career I'm in the NBA, though, it looks like. from Henderson now. We got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, oh my haven't God. been able to get through until now. It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Heck yeah. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town. Right. We don't know where the whistling man is. We can't get him. Her. That's true. That's where you come in. I'm sorry. Gallows <laughs> yeah. Creek is too big. Come on, Leslie, can't you just... I don't know. Secure the town. It's not that easy to secure a whole town, no matter how small, Forrest. That's fair. Now listen. It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. How far Find out as are much you? as time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. Oh my god. I'll, I'll do, do my, my best. best. I'll I do my best. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's <laughs> interview of a lifetime. I mean, it really is. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. That'd be nice. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. I hope you're right. The sooner this is over, the better. I am right. Trust me. Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Bringing you back live now. Thanks, Welcome back Peggy. to the Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Oh, God. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. Oh, nice. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. Thank John, you. Is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you Thank so much. Wow. Have so you did have been him. there then? God, That's huge. I don't even want to think about what would have I don't want to just assume that we saved course, him. Because, you know, you never know. We're just happy he's okay. Situations. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us. Whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Oh, he's conscious? Is this Forrest? Uh, yeah. Jason, we meet at last. It's good to hear you, Jason. How yeah, are you? Sure. Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach. And yeah. there's a knife in my leg. But, but you're John alive. gave me something to take the edge off. So... What are you, Quaaludes from the frickin' 30s? 
God. <coughs> Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But uh, before that, I I needed to call you. Of course, bro. Guessing the whistling man is still out there. Yep. Yeah. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. Yeah, God most people it. would be. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke Guys, to I am on fire he, right now. Is he all right? He is now. Yeah. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, Crap. I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah. Sure, yep. dude. The way Ricky's Peggy fine. is, I don't know if you guys have you seen that game show, like Deal or No Deal. That's a relief. But she you reminds me a George. lot of, like, the banker. Sounds like you know, she's kind of blacked out. She's up now. in the booth. It's been tough. She's on the phone the secretly. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. Dang, that's heavy. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. Well, here you are. And then the town just moved on like it never existed. What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. I'm having way too much fun with this. Plan a party in the woods. And it's oddly helping me focus on Have the story. The whistling man crash it. It was stupid. Yeah. Each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. The party that night I That's left ironic. for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. And now you got Started stabbed for real in front of everybody. Panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? That's what's I up. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream. Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Oh? Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Dude, I was making buckets, dude. How do we get it back on? Still making buckets. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare. Fair point. It's in the storage area in the far back corner. Up on in the, the far back corner. You might have spotted it earlier. I think I did. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, see you when you're back. Okay. I'm sure this is going to be fine. Okay. Mama ain't raised no bitch. Mama ain't raised no bitch. It's all good. It's all good in the neighborhood. It's all everything cool. Everything cool. Don't worry about it. Oh, look at this. Uh-huh. Mama ain't raised no bitch. Let's go. Uh huh. God, this is sense. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Why is it so big? There it is. That must be it. Boom! We've got power. Let's go. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. 
Wasn't there a speaker box down here? Dude, this is tense. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Mom, I ain't raised no bitch. She ain't raised no bitch now. She ain't raised no bitch. Where's the whistling woman? Bro, don't jump scare me. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> bro, come on, bro. I don't want to fuck this up. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. Super tense. Should I be sneaking around or like, what's up? Bro, bro, my nerves right now. Freaking nerves right now. What the oh hell? shit. Can't be happening. What? 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 A call. How do I? Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show, but it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. I mean, what, what do, you do you mean? mean? Make the most of it how? Well, huh? I thought we'd end tonight's whistling man special with a Where's special Peggy? guest. The one who started it all. Uh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. Uh -huh. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your uh -huh. daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world... Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? 
because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And who is this? He says where that is. Well, he knows he'll get it. Wait, then... Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your what? son? You mean you... Wait, that... That he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. Oh. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. That does, Hang yeah. On. Did you say... Barrel? Then... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. You don't know her voice if you, Damn, you know... Dude, what? Where is there Peggy? Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh, well, Whoa. it sure has been years since I last saw. Peggy, oh, shut up. God damn it. Let me get comfortable. Not Marie Don. Campbell. So, not Don, huh? No. What are you going to... Uh, uh, I sit down. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 what? years ago. Listen to me. You... Uh, I actually you keep hitting him. I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest... Honestly, Teddy I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Okay. Uh, Why should I help you? Why should I play any part in this? Because I think you believe in justice. You think this is justice? I have no goddamn idea, Forrest. Wait, did she not go in my basketball net? No, okay, it's over there. These people you've been trying to save, they were all in on it. They all knew George was murdered, but... Murdered? Uh, listen, I... <laughs> He's going to town on this guy. I said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. Okay. And that's why I want you to interview us. Um. Are you serious? You, you want me to interview you? Am I serious? After everything tonight, you really have to ask me if I'm serious. Uh... Do a good job, and hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. That would be nice. <laughs> Shut up, Teddy. I need to drag this out. Yeah. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Dude, will you? Do you want to die, Teddy? Because if you don't start talking. Uh, oh. What the hell? She beat me too. God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. Okay. When I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Okay. Um. Yeah, what made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass it up. I was just surprised. Okay. No one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I. Uh. Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Okay. Uh. God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, yeah. our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. 
It doesn't matter. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, I helped him keep himself together. You... You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man. Everyone ran, screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Ah, I don't no, think Ricky. Marie, no, you're Ricky. Wrong. Ricky was a pretty Ricky cool guy. Know. But I mean, what? he was. Did you miss that part of the broadcast? I spoke to him earlier. He had no idea what was happening. He yeah. said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. Okay. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he, well. Doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. I don't know, man. How can you still say it was just a prank? Yeah. Oh, come on. I. Oh, God damn it. You Ooh. made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Fair Jason's enough. still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing, telling me it's, it's just a joke. I could stall for time here. Yeah. Who was, Who was yeah. it? Marie? Who was the Whistling Man? Who was the Whistling Man? I suddenly recognized. It was Chuck. That's why she Chuck went after Chuck. Brody was the whistling man. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Damn. Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George fell off Whistling Point. Oh, God, man. How do you know what happened? I saw it. You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, God damn it! I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar. It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. I don't know, man. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Tish? Yeah. Uh, he deserved that one. Bitch. Teddy seems like a piece of shit. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. That's a fair, that's a fair question. Why cover it up? If she's lying, why the cover-up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then, who knows? I don't know, man. What happened that night was He's tragic. kind of a piece of shit for real. Happened. But it 
was a mistake. You probably make a great politician. It was politician. just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin a my blip? future? George was a blip? That's an evil yeah. thing to say, Teddy. That's yeah. the way it is. My father agreed with This dude's gonna get killed. Sandra found she gonna him kill this man. Morning she gonna don't kill this man. Running. She found him in the river, but she lied oh about God. that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own most of the town. That's it, then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing. Oh, come to on, do with man. Me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews, too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but. Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report, said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And yeah, that, that, that's, that's kind of that, messed up, dude. I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even, even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even yeah. went to the newspaper, but no, that coward killed the story. But Maurice Russell is dead now. I mean, that's obvious. I gotta buy time. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. It never... Started. He shouldn't have pushed my George off a cliff. He should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. I wish I could zoom in. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met. She's at the. He joined the football team. It was right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. It's at the gym, right? You're at Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So. Marie, where? Oh my God. Peggy. Teddy? You've got to help me. I. Quiet. You'll talk more Why later. is Peggy there? Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god! I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? Peggy, what, what's what? happening? Why are you even there? Want to explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? That was well, the call. It was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And oh my god. When you walked in, you found out. That... My sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or of course come I would. with what me when we need you on the radio. And I just... You should yeah. have said something. You should have told me. I know, okay? I should have. But I didn't imagine this situation then, so just... 
What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night, but did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they'd learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh... Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But Damn. since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Peggy? Eugene. Who was that? I... Wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Eugene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night too. But they got themselves killed in a bus accident. And since only their child was left. Murray, please. Dang. Mom and dad are gone. Peggy. That's brutal. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I could prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here on her desk. What now card? You're great and eight. The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I... Peggy. She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie. Hey, officer. Peggy, we I were survived. I need to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The oh. police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. <sighs> Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This has been Forrest Nash. I kind of have to, right? And it's been a scream. I kind of had to. I had to. Wow. God, that's all the people that died. Wow. Wow. I was fucking terrible at this game. But I certainly enjoyed it. Certainly enjoyed it. Oh? Where is this at? Oh, this isn't copyrighted. They have an OG song? Where am I at? Yo. Suspect has jumped. These are all the track. Is that? You think that's Whistling Point back there? Wow.
Wow. And just like that, that's it. God, man, that was such a cool game. That was so different compared to like everything else that I've ever played. Um, I've never really done a lot of the uh, interactive survival type games. That was really, really good. Like if I didn't give that like a 10 out of 10, that'd be like an 8.8 .8 or a nine. That was so cool. The story was good. Interactions were cool, funny. Man, what a good game. Um, you know, and there's multiple outcomes to this, uh, apparently, I was I was being told. So if this is something you guys want to play and figure out your own ending yourself, uh, I will leave a link to this uh, the, where you can get it from Steam. Um, and you guys can maybe figure out your own your own mysteries and maybe not kill 14 people. With that, guys, that's going to finish up our playthrough of Killer Frequency. It's been fun. It's been awesome. It's been up. It's been down. It's been all over the place. Um, can't wait to see what we're going to play next. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for all the love and support on the series. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. As always, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And we'll see you in the next one.